How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this really cool fiery text animation. The text is editable, a lot of fun stuff here. If you wanna know the font I used, it's called, um, so this is the font right here, C-H-O-P-S-I-C. -S -S -I I'm not gonna to try to pronounce that because I'll probably say it wrong, uh, but this is the project file here. If you wanna grab this exact project file, it is available in the description for a dollar. Everybody on Patreon tier one through three, you'll be getting that for free. If you don't know about the Patreon, you get two exclusive tutorials a month. These two animations you're seeing right now I taught in April, and you can grab that on Patreon right now. You also get project files from tutorials and monthly procedural materials created by Syncretic 3D. Uh, last month, he created these really amazing crystals and created the procedural materials for that. You can check that out along with everything else linked in my description. Now let's get into the tutorial. All right, and we are back. So we're just gonna go ahead and get a new file going and let's start from scratch. Now, if you've never used the really fun text tool here in Blender, you'll just hit Shift A and then go over here to text and there you go. Now to edit the text, you'll hit tab and then I'm just gonna in all caps type in F-I-R-E. Now, any word works for you, it really doesn't really matter. Now I'm gonna click over here to the little text editor and this is where all your specifications can play with your text. Now here on the alignment, I like to go from center and center and that'll give you your anchor point right here at the center of the text and that's really nice and fun. Now on font go ahead and click this little button right here and that should give you a dialog of all the fonts that are currently on your computer. If it does not I would suggest just going on um, any of these free font websites, DAF font, Google fonts, anything like that and just download one of the fonts and uh, put it on your desktop and you can go and um, import it through there. I'm gonna go ahead and just find a font that I think would work really well for this animation. So we'll go with this font right here. Now let's go ahead and model the font a little bit. So here on geometry is when we do a little bit of modeling. So on extrude, I'm just gonna hold down shift and bring that extrude up. Holding down shift gives you a nice smooth motion here. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and bevel the edge a little bit, super important. So here on the depth, I'm gonna go ahead and just bevel it just a little bit, something like that, 0 0.007. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this text to be a little bit wider. So right here on spacing, I'm gonna bring my character spacing a little bit. Normally, I wouldn't really like this to be touching, but it kinda of adds to it. So in this case, I'm just gonna leave it be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this, I'm gonna hit RX90 just to get him to be facing the way I want. Now I'm gonna hit the tilde key. The tilde key is right above the tab key for me. I'm going to click front, shift A, and get my camera. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and bring my camera back. And here we go. Now we have a nice uh, text here. I hit zero to go to my camera view here. Now if it's too close, too far for you, I'll just hit G and then middle click, and you can kind of mess with that. Or you can just hit G and move it around like this. Let's go ahead and shade our text here. So I'm gonna click on shading, hit zero, and move in here. I'm going to uh, collapse these two windows. I find them not very useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and click new, make this uh, surface metallic, keep the base color pretty bright. Actually, I'm gonna bring it down a little bit so we can see our emissions a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and get in a color ramp. And we're gonna plug the color ramp right here into the emission. So now we're gonna start playing with emissions here. And then we're gonna get the color of our emission, which will be the fire of our uh, text here and give it just a red or really any color you want. You can be creative with it. Now let's go ahead and get a noise texture. So we'll plug that there. Actually, we're gonna get a gradient texture first, G-R-A, gradient texture, plug the factor into the factor. Now here on the gradient texture, if you have the node Wrangler add-on enabled, it comes with Blender by default, just search it up in the add-ons section, but if you already have that done, control T gives you this nice little setup and we'll use the object coordinate here. Now, if you don't have the node Wrangler, just look up a map, shift A, search mapping texture coordinate, gives you the same thing. So now you can see the gradient is working. And if I go back here to the uh, principle, you can bring up that emission strength. You can see it's working really nicely. We need to rotate this a little bit here on the mapping node. So it looks like it's the Z by 90 degrees, now we have this flat portion here and you can bring up the emission strength to really see that. Now what I'm gonna do is start messing with this really hard edge here. 
what I'm going to do is get in a noise texture. So Shift A, Search in OI, Noise Texture here, plug the vector into the vector, and we're going to get a Mix RGB. So M I X Mix RGB, and we'll plug it into here and plug this noise texture into here. So let's get the factor into the color too. So what we can do here is if we bring the noise texture up, you can really start to see that noise texture working from the factor all the way to one, but then that gradient is gone. So let's bring that factor up so we can start getting something really cool. So we'll bring this color ramp in and then we'll bring the location of our gradient back up here in the mapping node. This looks like it's on the X. So bring this uh, gradient here. And then if you bring this factor in, you'll start to see that line start to morph. And that's what we want. We're gonna get our detail up to 12 here on the noise texture. And now we have something pretty cool. We have a very fiery text. This HDRI background is washing it out. So here on the material preview, you can hit this drop down and bring that world opacity down. Now you kind of get a better idea of what's going on here. Emission might be a little bit too high to see detail. But now we have our fire and you can bring that mix up even farther. And then you can bring that detail up, bring that roughness up if you want. Um, you can really do anything you want here. And then I'll go from 3D to 4D on the noise texture and this will allow us to animate it. So if you play with the W here, now we have kind of a really interesting looking kind of fiery animation with our noise texture and our gradient. And that is what we're trying to go for here on the text. So we're almost done shading that. Now we just need to add a little bit of fun here into the roughness. So we're gonna get in another color ramp here, hitting Shift A, color ramp, bring the color down here to the roughness, and then the noise texture. And then we're gonna use this mapping here to plug that into the vector. Noise texture into the color ramp. Now what we're gonna do is bring this color ramp in a little bit, bring this color up to a gray, bring that detail to 12, and then bring that roughness in a little bit. And now we have a little bit of roughness going on with our metal. And if we want, we can have a little bit more fun. Shift A, get a bump node. Plug the bump into the normal here. So plug that there. And then we'll plug the noise texture into the uh, into the height of the bump. So the strength is too high, so we'll bring that strength down, kind of bring it up like this, something like this. And now we have a little bit of texture, a little bit of bumping going on with our noise texture. And that's what we want. So now we have totally finished shading our fire text, which is pretty cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and get that really cool fiery looking fog that went around the fire. So shift A, get a cube. I'm gonna scale it up pretty far, something like that. Control A and apply scale. So we're gonna go here back into the shading window. I'm gonna click new. Now I'm going to delete the principled and search up VOL principled volume, plug it into the volume and we're almost there plug it into the volume and now we have some volume going on. Now we can go ahead and click this final render button in the uh, world settings here, right here on the right. Just bring it all the way down to black and now we're starting to do some stuff. So I'm gonna bring this d density down to zero. Shift A, we're gonna get a color ramp and now we're gonna make some smoke, some very fiery looking smoke. So let's get a color ramp and plug it into the emission color right here. Now let's get our color that we want, nice fiery red here, and then bring that emission strength up. And now we're doing something. We actually, I accidentally plugged it into the absorption color. We need to plug into the emission color. So now it's gonna be red. So now it looks crazy. We need to use a texture to tell, tell this fire smoke stuff how to actually be shaped. So we're gonna get a noise texture here. If I didn't do it already, make sure you hit Control A and apply scale on this cube. Super important for texturing. We're gonna plug the factor right here. And then I'm gonna control T, use the uh, object coordinate here. And then now we can bring this color ramp in and get this fire. Now, if some stuff looks different for you, I did neglect to tell you about EV settings. So I'm gonna click on this little camera icon, making sure you're in the EV render engine, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, screen space reflections, and uh, motion blur if you want, but I don't really think it, motion blur is even affected here. Um, so here we go. Now we have our smoke playing with this color ramp. 
let's go ahead and bring that scale up and now we have some smoke and bring that detail up to 12 if you want now we have this I'm gonna go ahead and add one more node here to really make this look cool we're gonna get a musgrave texture plug that right there we're gonna bring that scale up just like this and now we have some very swoopy looking smoke or fog or really whatever you would you would like to call it and then you can bring that um, emission strength up and really kind of play with that if you'd like now if I hit the render button here we can see what this volume looks like um, kind of in its final form and it's very swoopy it's very nice we're gonna leave it as is and now we have that you can take your noise texture and bring it over here Actually, I believe it's the Musgrave or the noise. Let's try the noise. Put the noise at 4D. Um, either one of them is good for um, animating. So if you play with that noise texture, you can play with that W. So that one's not animating the way I want. So we'll go to the Musgrave texture, bring it to the 4D. And then let's see. Yes, yeah, so the Musgrave gives you a much better animation. Um, it's hard to tell what it's doing. I've done this a couple times, so I can kind of imagine it. But this is kind of how our smoke is looking. We can bring that color ramp in to get more fine detail and dimension here. And we can hit render render image to kind of see how that's going to look. So it looks pretty cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A and get an, an area light. So I'm going to hit G to move the area light here. G, G to move it here. I'm going to hit R to make it rotate just like that. And then I'm going to go over here, click this little arrow, go to the scale tool, and we're going to scale this light out. So now we have it doing that. It's a little uneven, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and make this light a nice blue. Bring up the strength of that blue. And now we have something fun happening here. Let's go to the main view. And now we have our fire. So now you can go ahead and just kind of play around with your smoke and your fire to kind of get some more details if you want. You can bring that emission strength up some more I bring it all I brought it all the way down there accidentally so bring it up and then you can make this a little bit more toward yellow to match the scene better something like that and if we render it we can see that smoke in its final form very swoopy very nice and now we can kind of go along with that so now we're kind of ready to uh, render this to really make it look cool I'm gonna go to my area light and make it a little brighter we're gonna go ahead and bring this down You'll see, go over here, you'll see a little plus icon. Bring this up, click that, and click timeline. And I'm gonna leave it at the 250 frames. That kind of seems like enough. So I'm gonna go here, and in the W of our Musgrave texture, we're gonna animate our smoke. So first off, just to make sure this is going to work correctly, let's go to the EV settings. And right here on volumetri volumetrics, kind of tripped over my word here, have it either on four, have your resolution on four to give a really nice volume. If your computer can handle it, put your samples, volumetric samples at two to get a really nice swoopy, very high quality looking fog or fire or smoke, whatever you want to call it. So here we go. Now you can kind of animate this to however long you would like it to be. So I'm going to go ahead, right click on the W, insert keyframe. I'm gonna to go to the very end, and then kind of, it's gonna be about a 10 second animation. So I like right about there, insert keyframe. So now if I press play, you can kind of see the speed that that smoke is moving around, and that's kind of the speed I want. Kind of slow, kind of mysterious and swoopy. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll click on the text and do the same exact thing here on our noise texture. So you can see it animating right there. So right click on the W, insert keyframe, go to the very end, and we'll just animate it like that, insert keyframe. And now we have some animation happening here on our text, on our smoke. We'll click the render button one last time just to make sure it looks the way we want it to look. Pretty cool looking. And then just to um, actually export it, click on this little printer icon, click this button to kind of save it wherever you want to save it. Right here on PNG, if you want to just deal with a PNG sequence and compile that, Later, you can do that. If you want Blender to compile a video MP4 for you, click on PNG, do FF MPEG video, go here to encoding, click on MP4, medium to perceptually lossless, render, render animation, and when you're done, you're gonna get an animation similar to this one. Looks awesome, looks cool. You can use it for plenty of applications. So I hope you enjoyed this, and thank you guys for watching.